So we should have known from a pretty early time that there was something um, confusing about magic in the sense that uh, for a very long time people have known about something that magic and even though we started to define it in terms of similarity and uh, proximity, um, obviously no one really uh, questioned the fact that magic existed. And uh, it is uh, pretty uh, emblematic in that context to see how we have uh, more or less made room for magic in our lives, especially even magic that is uh, touchable or believable. In this book here dated from uh, 1584, uh, Reginald Scott, a, a gentleman, not much of a scientist or a noble person or whatever it is, wrote a book about uh, what he called the discovery of witchcraft. Mostly the idea, as you can expect, is to criticize that uh, people who believe in witchcraft and magic are are uh, are liars, and uh, that uh, there is uh, always a reasonable explanation to to everything that is uh, that is reason that is uh, considered uh, uh, magical. And uh, he did a very anthropological study. He went and asked uh, people who claimed to be uh, who claimed to be um, ma magical and to be witches, and uh, looked at the ways in which they uh, essentially faked uh, what, what would have otherwise be called uh, magic. And uh, the the idea, uh, most importantly for us here, is that he was not uh, trying to, um, to uh, criticize magic as much as he was uh, pointing out that the people who, uh, who practiced these forms of magic were uh, generally uh, poor and uh, older or, or, or generally not educated in, that, in, in the sense that <clears throat> the, uh, the, the magic existed. It was something that was created by people who had otherwise no uh, actual power in society. So he points out the fables of witchcraft have taken so fast hold and deep root in the heart of man that few or none can nowadays with patience endure the hand and correction of God. For if any adver adversity, grief, sickness, loss of children, corn, cattle, or liberty happen unto them, by and by they exclaim upon witches, as though there were no God in Israel that orders all things according to his will, punishing both just and unjust with griefs, plagues, afflictions, in manner and form as he thinks good. But that certain old women here on earth called witches must needs be contrivers of all means calamities as though they put themselves were innocents and had deserved such punishments. <clears throat> So this goes back to uh, the idea of uh, theodicy that we mentioned last week. Um, how do you explain that things uh, go wrong sometimes if God is all powerful? Um, well, um, some uh, uh, theological thinkers try to make sense out of that. Non-theological thinkers blamed it on witches. If something goes wrong, that has to be because of some bad magical power uh, dealt with by, uh, by regular people. And uh, obviously, uh, uh, Scott believed that uh, um, uh, in this context, people who hunted witches or, 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 or even condemned witches to jail in some sort, or even more so, you know, put them to death, um, those people were uh, not acting rationally. They were actually against Christianity to do so. And, and obviously, in this context, Scott was very much uh, speaking against the Catholic Church, who was the number one uh, um, cause uh, of this but obviously they were not the only one and and anyone uh, who and and in, the, in in this context the context of 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 blaming witches and witchcraft for for every ill in the world seemed to be pretty well established and we have a good example of that in Shakespeare here. Uh, Shakespeare drew from uh, from Scott in part to uh, make his uh, stories in, in Macbeth, where uh, there are witches who are portrayed. So this is from Act 4, Scene 1. <clears throat> Uh, the, the, so the, the backstory of Macbeth, uh, not assuming that everybody has uh, known it or has read it, is that a Scottish general named Macbeth who received the prophecy from uh, witches that he will eventually become the king of Scotland. So th that general has uh, no power of his own, but could be uh, the king of Scotland eventually, and he becomes uh, 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 power hungry, essentially, and, uh, and, and his wife entices him, and, and eventually Macbeth kills the king and uh, takes the Scottish throne for himself, again, making the, the prophecy come true. And uh, as a result of that, he becomes uh, guilty, he feels guilty, he feels paranoid, and, uh, and uh, eventually... Uh, 
has to kill more, has to uh, uh, become more uh, uh, violent about himself to become a, 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 a tyrant. And obviously he was uh, wanting to be the king to avoid the tyranny. And uh, the, the, the remaining story is about the, the bloodbath that comes from his interaction with others and with uh, Lady Macbeth. Anyway, the story, the witches are portrayed this way. Thunder crashes as the three witches look into their boiling cauldron. One of the witches throws something into the pot. Round about the cauldron I go, into the pot a toad I throw. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble. So you have this ritual that is uh, that is ex that is created by the these witches, and uh, of course uh, the the background to this is that, uh, well, first of all, you know this is your pretty uh, your pretty typical uh, picture of of witches that that remains to this day, uh, especially in in fairy tales. But um, so 16th century Scotland was was um, um, was experiencing that 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 trouble here. Uh, through uh, the the kingdom of uh, of James the first or or James the first uh, James the sixth of Scotland who becomes James the first of England, um, and uh, and the succession crisis between uh, Mary Queen of the Scots and and James who is uh, apparently an illegitimate child. <clears throat> so there is this um, illegitimate child because he is the son of her second husband and and she's not allowed to divorce. Um, anyway. Um, so, so the the story, of course, is is about is about uh, blaming these witches for for his power hungriness and for uh, for Macbeth being a generally a horrible person, and and this is justified by these uh, these um, almost uh, almost ridiculous uh, rituals being uh, being portrayed here. James the uh, First uh, um, himself was uh, obsessed with uh, with witches and witchcraft. Um, uh, generally speaking, because um, he was, uh, 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 he had a very uh, terrible life, uh, uh, or a very terrible early life, I should say. Um, uh, so Mary, Queen of the Scots, uh, was the only surviving uh, legitimate child of James V, and uh, she was uh, six days old when uh, her father died, and she inherited the throne as a uh, as a as an infant. So uh, she had to spend most of her early life in. Um, in uh, outside of Scotland and in a uh, regency, so somebody else was ruling for her. She was uh, betrothed at a very early age to a French king to ensure that uh, the aristocracy would be perceived. So married against her will, um, she um, uh, eventually comes back to um, comes back to 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 Scotland, and. Um, uh, uh, and few people trusted her to be a to be a good a good ruler, but she uh, turned out to be a reasonably good uh, ruler. She was mostly uh, tolerant because of these issues of religion. She uh, uh, allowed uh, uh, religious settlement across the world, but he was also uh, opposed to Queen Elizabeth the uh, first, uh, who was uh, trying to uh, to to have control over Scotland, but at the same time uh, wanted to have the um, the Protestants have some kinds of of civil rights uh, at the time. So uh, uh, essentially, um, uh, the, the 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 rivalry between Queen Elizabeth the first and and uh, Queen Mary of Scotland turns into a uh, a hunt for um, Mary, the Queen of Scotland, who is. Uh, um, executed uh, in in 1582, and of course, how do you explain that the most powerful uh, uh, ruler of, of Scotland is 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 uh, is executed besides some kind of magical dark power? Uh, well, for James, her son, uh, this is even more complex, of course, to see his mother be executed. And so he is uh, he is sent out of Scotland, of course, excommunicated. Uh, the Pope also excommunicated Mary anyway, so they are excommunicated from the church. Eventually, came, uh, King James comes back to uh, Scotland from Denmark with his new wife. Uh, they get caught in a storm and uh, and almost uh, drown. Uh, obviously, uh, James blames witches for for making that happen. Um, and uh, and eventually, uh, when he becomes uh, uh, king of Scotland again, um, the um, hey, the everything is the the fault of of witches essentially. Um, did I mention that um, um, Mary's husband was also murdered? Uh, probably not. Anyway, 
Um, so uh, James has a pretty tough childhood as a result and uh, becomes obsessed with uh, with witches and he even writes a book about uh, witchcraft and uh, the the reality of of witches in the world he um, uh, uh, says uh, what what do you think of these strange news which now only furnishes purpose to all men at their meaning I mean of these witches surely they are wonderful uh, wonderful in the sense of they cause wonder not they are great but uh, you know it causes people to wonder and I think so clear and plain can Confessions in that purpose have ne never fallen out in any age or country. No question if they be true, but they're of the doctor's doubts. Um, what part of it do you doubt? Even of all, for ought I yet uh, perceive, per perceive, and namely, that there is such a thing as witch witchcraft or witches, and I would pray you to resolve me thereof if you may. For I have reasoned with sundry in that matter, and yet could never be satisfied therein. So this is a dialogue, uh, as, as is often the case in uh, in these early writings, where obviously uh, 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 there people are weighing the proof or the existence of of witches, whether or not those things are true. Uh, you uh, you may know that King James is also the sponsor of the translations of the King James Bible uh, that we have mentioned a few times over the course of the semester, uh, and we have mentioned especially their mentions of sorcerers and and witchcraft. Uh, so James I uh, of England, very important king of England. Uh, he was the king when Jamestown was founded, uh, which if you have anything to learn about colonial America, this is one thing. And uh, obviously the fact that uh, the king of England argues that witches are real and that there is some kind of basis in magic and reality for witches, especially as an evil force, um, is very uh, a very dominant source of uh, of information for a lot of people who um, who are just looking for answers and who are in a similar situation here. So here's another book from uh, Thomas Wright, Narratives of Sorcery and Magic from the Most Authentic Sources. I think I've mentioned this guy before in the class uh, by his attachment and patronage to historical and antiquarian science, meaning that people for uh, the, most of the following years after James I and after those years are very uh, are, are studying witchcraft as a um, as a reality as a as a as a thing that is a thing in the world as if it was real and uh, in his book uh, Thomas Wright says if the universality in if the universality of a belief be a proof of its truth few creeds have been better established than that of sorcery Remember, we talked about this in the context of uh, of vampires as well, uh, talking about there's so many people who talk about vampires in the Eastern Europe that they have to be true, although, of course, most people that were know they were not real. Well, Wright does about that same idea here. Everyone around the world has some idea of magic. Every people from the rudest to the most defined, we may almost add in every age, have believed in the kind of supernatural agency which we understand by this term. It was founded on the equality equally extensive creed that besides our own visible existence we live in an invisible world of spiritual beings by which our actions and even our thoughts are often guided and which have a certain degree of power over the elements and over the core or near course of organic life so uh, in some way or another everyone believes Believe that there is some kind of supernatural force, and uh, as a result of that, this is a very easy bridge to explaining that magic itself is real, that this is something that people live by. And Wright further points out that this is not just something that is right, but it is also something that people choose to believe. The belief of which we are treating manifested itself under two different forms, sorcery and magic. The magician differed from the witch in this that while the latter was an ignorant instrument in the hands of the demons, the former had become their master by the powerful intermediation of a science which was only within reach of the few and which these beings were unable to dissipate. So uh, uh, the magic and sorcery are more or less the same, except that the magician has a science and uh, tries to uh, to control, whereas the witches are kind of the victims of magic. And of course, it fills the um, it fills the definition that we uh, started with that the people who are associated with witchcraft are typically people who are otherwise uh, down on their luck or oppressed in some way, and so they have to quote unquote give in to magic. Uh, to uh, to live their lives, whereas the magicians are a little bit more of an aristocratic version of it, people who are able to uh, to make sense out of magic in a more scientific way.
uh, should probably point out that uh, even though we typically associate witches with uh, women, that is not always the case. So here, an example from uh, from Bernard in 1630 talking about he witches, uh, which 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 hmm, that's not great writing. Which which is upon the bewitched. Uh, so the definition of which um, a conference I had once with a suspected healing witch, a man, a miserable poor of an horrid countenance of whom I asking how he knew a man or a beast to be bewitched. He told me by two things. First, by his trouble of having his prayer answered. So how do you know that uh, witches are real? Is that your uh, prayers don't come true? Uh, a very obvious uh, uh, form of of magic, uh, even though you know not religion anyway. But you know, so this is a he witch, and and it used to be much more popular. Although after the 1700s, because of those representations through uh, Shakespeare and through King James the uh, First, they tend to uh, to go away a little bit more. But in the King James version, of course, we have this aspect of witches that exist and that uh, come back quite a bit. So here on the left, uh, from uh, from Exodus 22, 18, a side note in the Ainsworth's translation or uh, in Ainsworth's commentary on the King James translation. So on the right, King James version of 2021 still says thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. But the context here is a witch or sorceress whereof uh, see the notes of Exodus 17, 7, 11. He speaks of the woman because witchcraft is most in use among that kind, but implies also the man witch or sorcerer. Therefore, the Greek translates it her plurally, witches. The Hebrews observe whosoever is guilty of death, the judges that do not put him to death. They break an affirmative precept, but trans transgress not against a prohibitive saving of the witch. For if they put not him to death, they transgress a prohibition. As it is said, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. It's also exist in the Sanhedrin, so in the, uh, in the, the, the Jewish Hebrew tradition. But anyway, uh, which is in this context, because it exists in English and because it exists in somewhat of the Greek, but Greek as it is translated into English, is translated into a variety of ways depending on what kind of Bible translation you are interested in. So in the American translation, King uh, Exodus 22 to 18 says, thou shalt not suffer a sorceress to live in a complete Jewish Bible from 1998. Whoever has sexual relations with an animal must be put to death. Well, we're pretty far from witches here. Um, contemporary English version says death is the punishment for witchcraft. The Douai Reims American version says wizards, thou shall not suffer to live. The New Catholic Bible says whoever lies with an animal must die. Again, uh, pretty far away, but apparently this is an acceptable translation. New Century version says put to death any woman who does evil magic. And wow. Okay. So um, obviously, you know, getting caught up in the vocabulary of who is a witch and uh, whether a witch is a man or a woman is a lot more a matter of cultural interpretation that it has anything to do with uh, whether or not this is magical and whether or not people are living. But I should remind you of something we have mentioned also previously in this class, the matter of natural liminality brought by Victor Turner in his idea of uh, of ritual. We mentioned that in the context of spirits. The attributes of liminality or of liminal persona, threshold people, are necessarily ambiguous since this condition and these persons elude or slip through the network of classifications that normally locate states and positions in cultural space. Liminal entities are neither here nor there. They are betwixt in between the positions assigned and arraigned by law, custom, convention, and ceremonial. As such, their ambiguous and indeterminate attributes are expressed by a rich variety of symbols in the many societies that ritualize social and cultural transitions. Thus, liminality is frequently likened to death, it being to the womb, to invisibility, to darkness, to bisexuality, to the wilderness, to an eclipse of the sun or the moon. So society, modern society especially, has ritualized uh, social aspect, cultural aspect, uh, national aspect. So you become the king by uh, honoring the king. You do that on a ritual basis, and that becomes your ritual pretty easily. But the uh, opposite part of that process is that the other forms of existence, such as quote-unquote magic or anything that is just not following the... Uh, political order become uh, liminal, they become uh, existing in between two states, and those people become magical as a result of that. And magic means that it can be somewhat visible, somewhat invisible, somewhat in wilderness, so the witch is uh, living 
in the forest, uh, uh, likened to death because they have those death spells and also uh, uh, odd sexual practices here in the context of uh, sleeping with beasts is obviously much more than ambiguous. But again, there's no telling that the quote unquote witches are supposed to do that or expect to do that. They have a what was considered at the time a deviant uh, sexual practice and uh, whatever that may be might as well be uh, uh, sleeping with animals obviously. That is not realistically what is happening. The understanding is that uh, is that witches are bad, so therefore witches do bad things. And what is a bad thing that people do is uh, lay with animals or eat children or drink blood. You know, whatever horrible things you imagine people are doing, especially people not like you. That is, people who don't follow the political order. So by the 20th century, we have a much bigger understanding of how witch is working especially a much more critical vision of witchcraft than any other uh, vision of the creatures we have seen so far because we know at this point in time that there is a political social cultural dimension to what a witch is is and we have at this point in time observed witchcraft in other parts of the world in uh, indigenous traditions so here from montague summers writing in 1926 he was a clergyman a teacher uh, about to go into the uh, the or the religious orders but then uh, converts to catholicism and uh, starts to call himself a catholic priest even though he did not go to seminary and he did not follow the catholic orders uh and he writes a book about the history of witchcraft uh, the witch heretic and anarchist sorcier est celui qui par moyen diabolique sciemment s'efforce à parvenir de quelque chose a sorcerer is one who by commerce with the devil has the full intention of attaining his own ends with these words, the profoundly erudite jurist consul Jean Baudin, one of the acutest and most strictly impartial minds of his age, opened his famous De la démonomanie des, mo des sorciers, so the demonology of sorcerers, and it would be, I imagine, hardly possible to discover a more concise, exact, comprehensive, and intelligent definition of the witch. So, witches are heretics against the religious orders, they are anarchists against the political orders, and as a result of that, they are portrayed as such regardless of how quote-unquote magical or, or, or supernatural these things are. They are supernatural because we assume that order, whether political or religious, is natural, and everything outside of that seems unnatural. Supernatural seems odd and, well, uh, another word you could use in this context is queer, I suppose. Anything that just doesn't follow the order is labeled as something else, as an other. And of course, the study of which is in an academic sense, in a scientific sense, comes from this. So here, a book from 1952 tells us that there were people who were practicing witchcraft at Oxford University. This is a serious book on a serious subject. It was only the original approach which was perhaps flippant. At Oxford University in 1928, a few of us founded a witch group. One paper only was read by a young undergraduate from Lady Margaret Hall, who is now a distinguished politician, in the half-light of a room which our host had garishly decorated on the occasion with murals of startling color and obscenity. There were black candles, and afterward we ate passion fruit. To subsequent meetings, the late Montague Summers was or was not invited to come. I forget which, but it was anyhow projected. And certainly a one of them, a puppet representing Mr. Peter Fleming, was ritually burnt. It was all extremely childish and distressing. So uh, uh, people were practicing witchcraft in the, the highest institu institution of Britain. So obviously this is uh, not an occult practice per se, but it is something that people think is cute or interesting. Peter Fleming is a, um, a, 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 a journalist and adventurer and uh, the brother of Ian Fleming who wrote uh, James Bond uh, books. Um, um, you know, this is just a, uh, a a side note here and interesting stuff that happens, but you know, uh, 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 which uh, witchcraft exists, witchcraft is practices, and witchcraft it is in the end folklore. Here from Margaret Murray, uh, an important person, or maybe an important person in the study of of witchcraft, born uh, uh, in uh, in British India, so uh, discovering the Orientalist tradition at a very early age that we have mentioned previously in this class. Uh, she trained to be a nurse and a social worker, went back to England and became an Egyptologist orientalist at the university college of london and she says of the ancient religion of pre-christian britain there are few, few written records but it is contrary to all experience that a cult should die out and leave no trace immediately on the introduction of a new religion 
The so-called conversion of Britain made the conversions of the rulers only. The mass of the people continued to follow their ancient customs and beliefs with a veneer of Christian rites. The centuries brought a deepening of Christianity, which introduced from above, gradually penetrated downwards through one class after the other. During the process, the laws against the practice of certain heathen rites became more strict as Christianity grew in power. The church tried to a strength against quote-unquote witches in high places and was victorious, and in the 15th century, open war was declared against the last remains of heathenism, the famous bull of Innocent VIII. So uh, Margaret Murray points out that uh, the, the continuity of the story of witches exists in the folklore of the English, or you could perhaps that which call this uh, folk religion, if you will. This is a practice of people who are not in power and people believe in these uh, folk practices, full folk folklore as a result of that. Uh, Margaret Murray becomes a very important authority on the, the knowledge of witchcraft eventually. She works for the Royal Anthropological Institute. She's a member of the Folklore Society. All of those things we have mentioned in the past. And obviously, she's a very important figure in bringing this scientific understanding of what witchcraft is into the world. Murray says that the practice of witchcraft is to follow the horn god. It is impossible to understand the witch cult without first understanding the position of the chief personage of that cult. He was known to the contemporary Christian judges and recorders as the devil and was called by them Satan, Lucifer, Beelzebub, the found fiend, the enemy of salvation, and similar names appropriate to the principle of evil, the devil of the structures with whom they identified him. This was far from the view of the witches themselves. Through them, this so-called devil was God, manifest and incarnate. They adored him on their knees and addressed their prayers to him, they offered thanks to him, the giver of food and necessities of life, they, they dedicated their children to him, and there are indications that, like many other gods, he was sacrificed for the good of his people. So, in other words, the devil, the horn god, is the object of witchcraft because the aristocrats, the people that oppress them, are the worshippers of the good god. So they take the opposite stance and they follow the horn god as their own god, the anti-hero that Madame Blavatsky had mentioned before. Margaret Mary is important because she was inspiring to Gerald Gardner, who wrote a book called The Witchcraft Today, with an introduction here by Mar Margaret Mary. She says Gerald Gardner, until his recent death, was a member of one of the few covens of witches surviving in England with an unbroken oral tradition that goes back to pre-Christian days. For the first time, secrets of the cult are revealed by a practicing devotee, and they differ significantly from testimony obtained by torture. The cult worships a horned god representing death, a moon goddess, either too unknown on books of witchcraft, representing fertility and rebirth. The male priest in the role of the horn god presides at Halloween and February Eve's Sabbath, while the priestess acting at the moon goddess conducts the May and August Eve Sabbaths. Uh, uh, Gerald Gardner uh, describes in Witchcraft Today the rituals of Wicca, which today become associated more specifically with quote-unquote witches. That is one very specific form of witchcraft, which again is a folk religion, is a folk practice. It is not an aristocratic practice. It is a form of science, a form of magic that is available to all and uh, by definition is opposed to political and religious orders. <laughs> 